I'm doing this so that you, all of you got, all of you guys in the audience watching this, understand and be grateful for what you have, um, and understand not only me but other others with physical, emotional, mental challenges have. A great filmmaker, T.C. Christensen, once said that he wants, um, after, after 17 Miracles, he said that he wants his viewers to take, um, to take songs away from us. Have you come out of like once you go out of that theater and once you go out of the theater and we have felt something. That's what I want. That's what he wants. That's what that's what I want to feel. That's what I want to portray as a, a well, that's what I want to portray as a, a filmmaker, a porn filmmaker. Like I really want to make my 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 films so that audiences can be inspired. He doesn't have any um, muscle tone in his chest area or stomach area and so he can't sit up by himself without propping himself up with his hands and that creates a lot of problems because he can't sit in a normal wheelchair where he can lean forward and use that pushing action so he always has to be strapped in and that restricts looking down and restricts uh, being able to do things easily in school he can't turn around and get his own backpack out from the back of his wheelchair because um, he can't turn he just has to be strapped in. The hardest uh, time that he's had in, in all of his health history has been when um, they decided to put rods up his back because of the scoliosis and it was going to be done in two stages. The doctor was from Shriners and but he went over to Primary Children's where they did the surgery and um, they removed 10 discs and that's the most they'd ever done in any patient. And then they inserted, uh, screwed in a halo in his head right here, came all the way around his head. And then they put weights on it. And each day they put a little bit more weight on it. And it looked bizarre. It looked really scary, but it didn't hurt as bad as it looked until eventually it didn't seem to hurt him at all. And so the weights uh, that would come up from the, from the top of the halo down over the bed or down over his wheelchair as he was able to get up, just got heavier and heavier. So it pulled his spine and stretched it and tried to straighten it. That was done in five weeks so he spent five weeks with the halo on at Shriners and then they took him back to Primary Children's to remove the halo and insert the rods along his spine. In the process of doing that and unbeknownst to us uh, the anesthesiologist accidentally um, tore Emma's only good working vocal cord and we didn't know that we just knew that he had a really whispery voice when he got done couldn't speak very well and we brought him home and for about three months we just struggled with his oxygen levels and couldn't figure out what was wrong. We finally determined that there was scar tissue would come from that little rip in his uh, vocal cord. His airway was closed 90% and so they had to go in and do a tracheostomy. And so he had that done. Nine months later, um, we had it reversed and they rebuilt his trach and through all of this, he was very, very sick. Um, he, the, each surgery just brought in more problems and more peritonitis and, and the pressure in his shunt was crazy and his eyes looked crazy and it was really a very frightening period of time. He lost a lot of weight and he was really sick but once they got it kind of straightened around and got him out then he could, um, he could come home and, and didn't have trach anymore but he still has a very little voice. And that's one of the things that bothers him more than anything is that he can't be heard, he can't sing like he used to. He used to be able to sing in almost perfect pitch and he loved to sing, he loves music. 
and this has really restricted him being able to hear and that's why he wears a microphone because you can't can't hear him very well. He made great friends with doctors and nurses. He always flirts with the nurses at the hospital and when he sees them years later and hasn't seen them again, they know him, he knows them, he gives them hugs, he loves them, he loves everybody. And so just to be around people make him, makes him really happy. I love the way that you care about people mm. and the way that you can connect with people. I feel like that's a really big strength of your way into Disney knows every single thing there is to know about Disney. I like this girl. Oh you are God. so good at that. <laughs> oh gosh. And I know you love BYU. Didn't well, you? You okay? Yeah, I'm just being emotional a little bit. Oh. But I think what definitely gives you peace, I think it's like a special thing for you, is the company of others. I think you really like the company of others, just, you know, having people around. Uh, I think I know you love that. Just when anybody comes to visit you, whenever I was over at your house, and anybody comes to visit you or just have me over, I think you really find peace in the company of others. Yeah. I know that you're happy when you do, okay. do really well, well on a test. Okay, that's good. It's really beautiful music and also being part of something. I feel like uh, you being part of choir has brought you peace and also um, singing beautiful songs. Um, when you put people first, there's always a greater joy. And you're a good example of that. And I what do I learn by knowing Ammon? Yeah. He's my greatest teacher. I have learned unconditional love. I have learned how to be kind. And it's really interesting to go with him, take him shopping, or go to some big church meeting or go in public because Ammon knows everybody. And everybody knows Ammon. And I have made new friends just because he's my son. Because we go somewhere and it, it used to be in the grocery store that if he'd see somebody that he knew and they didn't hear him or didn't see him, he'd go chasing off after him to say hello because he knew them and he wanted to say hello. So I'm learning to slowly be more outgoing because of him. Uh, definitely be kinder to people because of him. And... Um, when I had knee surgery, he would come in and say, Mom, if I can go through as many as I've gone through and I can do it, you can do it too. And he would sit there while I was on the couch sobbing because I hurt and he'd brush my hair, he'd pat my hand, or he'd be my babysitter and he was my cheerleader and I've learned so much from him. I have learned a lot. I have learned that it's the that people matter. I've learned to not take our gifts for granted because I know that your singing voice was a, a gift that you had that um, you dearly treasured and then to have it taken away from you because of the surgery I know was, was, really, um, was really difficult. If you have something that you love you should treasure it and be grateful for the gifts that you know. Even though there's like it might be a rainy day or something, you always have a positive attitude and you're always like, like, you just have a positive attitude and everything. You know, you know that everything will be better and you have helped me know that. I have a lot of blessings that I'm not always grateful for. Okay, things that I don't have to worry about, a wheelchair, I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, a lot of things, a lot of the trials that you've had to go through, um, I've definitely learned that I need to be more grateful for what I have. He just says, dream big, and he just accepts life, maybe because he hasn't, he doesn't know what it's like to walk, so he doesn't realize or recognize fully what it is, but um, he just rises to the challenge. His uh, surgeon last summer told him that he needed to have more protein in his tissues and that one of the things he was going to need to learn to do was to eat a burger. Yeah. And we all laughed. We didn't think that was going to ever happen. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, Adam made his first hamburger. It was nine months later, but he learned to eat. He's eaten a hamburger. And uh, he sets those as challenges and wants to, wants to deal with those the best he can. And I don't know anybody in this world that dreams bigger than Ammon. When somebody tells you you can't do something, just believe. I want you guys, audience, to believe in yourselves. I want you to... It's, it's okay to 
faire. I want you to dream big. I want to. I want you to push through your struggles, whatever struggle you're going through. I want. I want to. I want to have a little. I want to have every, I want to, I want you guys to feel so, uh, I want you guys to feel happy. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do something because it may have a disability, you may have struggles in your life, but guess what? Nobody's perfect. No. Never take your gift for granted. Even if it's, even if you can't look down or you can't, you can't do, you are limited to something. Don't, don't be afraid to go out to dream big. What? What is something you learned?